This is Optimal Startup Daily, episode 146. Are people who have their dream jobs more productive? By Laura Stack of theproductivitypro.com. And welcome back to Optimal Startup Daily, where I read to you each and every day from the best blogs we can find on entrepreneurship. And if there's a topic out there that we haven't covered yet, or maybe an author you'd like to hear from, come visit oldpodcast.com and let us know about that. Again, it's old, the word old, O-L-D, podcast.com. So, Who's been in this pickle? To win your next big customer, you need cloud infrastructure that can sustain high performance under an enterprise workload. But without that big customer, enterprise cloud is priced out of reach. Not anymore. Oracle for Startups delivers enterprise cloud at a startup price tag with free cloud credits and 70% off industry-leading cloud services to help you reel in the big fish, confidently. And with multi-cloud support, no vendor lock-in, and security-first approach, You're free to keep building any way you choose. Your partnerships should be assets, not roadblocks to your success. To learn more, visit oracle.com slash goto slash OSD. For now, let's get right to today's post as we optimize your life. Are people who have their dream jobs more productive? By Laura Stack of theproductivitypro.com. Do productive people always have their dream jobs? No. Are you more productive when you enjoy what you're doing and are happy in your work? Yes. So do you find your work fulfilling or are you just going through the motions to pay the bills? What if you're in a job that is a springboard to the next one? That's fine. There's a difference between everyday annoyances and unsettling deep malcontent. Life's too short to keep a job that makes your stomach hurt. As they say, do what you love and the money will follow. So how do you know if you're in your dream job? One, make a list of your dreams. You may have only one, or you may have several. Some may be really big, and some may be small. Like, I want to make jewelry and sell it online. I want to be a meteorologist. I want to start my own pension consulting business. Two, make a list of your passions. What do you love? Singing, playing guitar, photography? Is there a dream job in there somewhere? Three, make a list of your core values. Is it important to you to have ample time to enjoy life? Is it important to you to be helping others through your work, no matter how many hours of the week it takes? Four, make a list of what you're naturally good at and love to do. Teaching people how to play tennis, working with animals, decluttering homes and offices, cooking French cuisine. Is there a dream job in there somewhere? Now, why don't you do it? Perhaps you're afraid you won't make any money. Perhaps you're afraid to leave a high-paying job in search of a more fulfilling one. Perhaps you're afraid you'll fail. Whatever the reason, fear is a real energy drain. It will paralyze you, lock you up, and keep you in the status quo. If you are to find your purpose and experience the flow, you will have to muster the courage to fight it off. Happiness is not all about money. You could have a BMW, a home with four bathrooms, your kids attend the best schools that money can buy, and your wife looks like a supermodel. But perhaps you're still unhappy and you can't figure out why. As Stuart Goldsmith says in his book, The Seven Secrets of Success, Quote, becoming wealthy has little to do with buying a bunch of silly toys. You have to be a very sad individual if this is the limit of your imagination. How much champagne can you drink? How many Rolexes do you need? How big a wardrobe of clothes will satisfy you? This is all junk. They're toys, harmless baubles to amuse us for five minutes. Attaining these toys is not the purpose of a noble life. End quote. He adds, quote, Happiness comes from leading a worthwhile life and producing something of quality and value. Sitting around in a mansion and staring at your Porsche will not make you happy, end quote. It's quite normal and understandable for people to want a lot of money. Having a lot of money, especially in a capitalistic society, is equivalent to having plenty. This is an instinctive evolutionary drive. Of course, you don't want to have to walk 20 miles with your Neanderthal club in hand to find a food source. But in a capitalistic society such as ours that's brimming with shiny things, this perfectly reasonable drive morphs into greed. And before you know it, we equate money and things with happiness. But it's not money in and of itself that makes us happy. It's the freedom that money provides that opens a big wide door to the land of happiness. In other words, if we're not living hand to mouth, we have the time to pursue what we truly love, whether that's writing a novel, volunteering full-time for a homeless shelter, or having time to watch the sun set every single evening. How much did you spend on your most recently acquired boastworthy possession? What if you were to take that same amount of money and donate it to a charity that feeds the hungry? 
Can you picture the poverty-stricken child whose face lights up when she receives a week's worth of hot meals? Which brings you more happiness, the possession or the child with a full stomach? How do you like to make the world a better place? Helping people overcome illness, working with the mentally handicapped, teaching people how to exercise. If I looked at the way you spend your time, would I be able to tell what's important in your life? The majority of people spend far too much time working and not enough time with their loved ones. Then they arrive home and have no energy left to devote to their spouse or children. They take the day's problems out on the people they love, the entire reason they're working in the first place. You say your family is important to you. Can people tell you value them by the way you spend your time? You say your significant other is the most important thing in the world. How much time have you spent spending time with them versus spending time working? You say your spirituality is important, but how much time do you spend praying, reading, meditating, attending services, volunteering, or whatever reflects your beliefs? Is it merely an outside facade? Say and do the same thing. Be congruent, or just stop saying it and be yourself. To be in alignment with your values, what you say and what you do should be the same. Bottom line, adjust your career and your life balance so your time reflects what matters to you most. Put some metrics on your priorities. Companies measure their results and you should measure yours. Spending time with my family is my greatest pleasure in life. Work is just my hobby. I only want to be out of town five nights per month. I want to eat dinner at home 25 days per month. I want to take six weeks of vacation each year. I work no more than 45 hours per week, although I could easily work 100. Keeping track of my behavior each month makes me accountable. I know immediately whether my schedule is meshing with my priorities and my values. These figures are in front of me as a constant reminder of what I'm trying to accomplish with my life. Assess how you're spending your time. What are you doing with it? Watching TV? Flipping through magazines? What would you rather be doing? What are your metrics going to be? What do you want your epitaph to say? He had a well-mowed lawn? There wasn't one speck of dust in her house? His Porsche was really shiny. Do, don't dream. You just listened to the post titled, Are People Who Have Their Dream Jobs More Productive? by Laura Stack of theproductivitypro.com. And thank you to Gusto. If you're running a startup, you're gonna wanna hear this. We've been using Gusto for years now and have no plans to change payroll providers. Gusto wasn't just built for small businesses. It was built for the people behind them. Their online payroll is so easy to use. Gusto can automatically calculate paychecks and file all your payroll taxes, which means you have more time to run your business. Plus, Gusto does way more than payroll. Gusto helps with time tracking, health insurance, 401ks, onboarding, commuter benefits, offer letters, access to HR experts. You get the idea. It's super easy to set up and get started, and three out of four customers say they run payroll in 10 minutes or less, our Optimal Living Daily team included. And if you're moving from another provider, they can transfer all your data for you. It's no surprise 94% of customers are likely to recommend Gusto. And here's the best part. Because you're a listener, you get three months totally free. All you have to do is go to gusto.com slash OSD. Again, that's gusto.com slash OSD, and I am telling you, you're going to love Gusto. Get started today, G-U-S-T-O dot com slash OSD. And I want to thank Laura Stack for letting us share her work here today. She is an award-winning keynote speaker and the best-selling author of eight books. Her engaging personality combined with over 25 years of experience helping organizations achieve results have made her one of the most sought-after experts and keynote speakers in her field. And we actually feature her work frequently on Optimal Living Daily since that show covers primarily productivity, so you can hear more from her there as well. And Laura's been featured in the New York Times, USA Today, the Wall Street Journal, Entrepreneur, and Forbes magazine, and has been a spokesperson for Microsoft, Dannon, 3M, Office Depot, Xerox, and more. And there is so much to learn from her, so much great content. Just come by theproductivitypro.com for a lot more. She has her videos, books, store, newsletter, and blog all right there for you. Again, that's theproductivitypro.com. And thanks again to Laura for letting us share her work. But I think that does it for today. I thank you so much for being a subscriber and being here with me each and every day. Hope you're well, hope you're having a great week, and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.